open up my stream. I am gonna record this, so like, yeah, if anyone wants to needs to dip at any point, that's fine. Like, do what you gotta do. And yeah, I'm gonna record it and post it at some point. So obviously, like some of the stuff, I'm gonna try and be brief because look, like we have a lot of good players, experienced players here, and I don't wanna like you know, bore you guys a little bit too much. But I just kind of wanna go through this so we're sort of all on the same page. Okay, so I'm gonna run through this. Some stuff I'm gonna, I'm just gonna talk for a little bit at the beginning and then I'll probably be drawing some stuff a little bit and then like we'll watch like one or two VODs, like not all of the VODs, but just like the parts that we just need to see. And so some of the stuff that I mentioned here, you can kind of actually just get a better like visual representation of it and just kind of like see what it looks like in war. Okay, so what is macro? Macro on a basic, very basic level, I think, is just kind of how you're orienting your micro. You know, for war, it's like, you know, just some decision-making stuff, kind of your overall strategy, and then like just kind of your tactics, you know, moment to moment. Pretty straightforward. And the reason why I think in this particular game it matters a lot more than any of the micro is because, let's be honest, the micro isn't that difficult in this game. The micro is pretty simple for the most part obviously there's some classes where like yeah you need to actually be good at the micro otherwise it kind of doesn't really matter like you can't be effective with the class but in general like the micro is pretty easy in this game so if you have really solid macro overall like just general generally good macro and you make good decisions it just goes a long way so like i think a company with like just average players they have impeccable macro they're going to beat the most stacked company that you can that you can think of if that company doesn't have good macro themselves and I kind of think of like supple in this way too. Like, obviously, no offense to supple or anyone in here that's in supple, but like when I play against supple, I don't think I'm getting skill diffed or I'm getting like out microed. I more think like I'm just playing against like a well oiled machine, and like that machine is insanely strong and it's it's like a boss, you know, like you're fighting a boss or something. That's kind of the reason why it matters more in this game. And so I think it's super, super important that everyone has good macro because like, hey, even if you if you don't think you're the greatest player, like if you just make good decisions, it's going to go a long way and it will it will help, you know, yourself and you'll help, you know, your teammates. So now now I'll talk a little bit about balanced gameplay and kind of what that means. So when I think of balanced gameplay, I kind of think of forced gameplay versus fluid sort of gameplay. And that kind of means sort of brain versus like instinct. And I think you need both of these things, but I think it sort of depends on two things. What kind of player you just are in general? Are you just naturally more of a fluid player or are you kind of naturally more of like a brain kind of player? And so that means when you're just moving around by yourself, like what are you kind of normally going to do? Are you going to kind of like use your brain and like maybe like for have more force gameplay, like maybe play more with your teammates or like sort of force yourself to like play in a certain position or to do something? Or are you kind of just running around very instinctively, just seeing value and just kind of going for it? I'm like a very fluid player. I'm not a very force player, but I think obviously you need to balance these two. And it's not like a 50-50 thing. It's not like you have to be 50% brain and 50% instinct. It really depends, again, on like what kind of player you are and then what your job is and the position that you're playing in. So like an example of this for me would be like in EU for Para, I am in our disrupt group and I'm playing in like the enemy backline basically. And in that position, like I think my gameplay kind of excels because fluid gameplay is really, really good there because they're, you're doing like a lot of ping ponging back and forth between value. You know, you're kind of looking at point, you're looking at healers to disrupt, you're like looking to cross over, you're like constantly just looking around for value. Whereas like maybe like if you're playing in like a back, line position or something which is slightly more static you could be playing with your team a little bit more and that's not to say like i don't play with my team but i can get a lot of value not always playing with my team and then there are like other ways that like i can kind of hack the sort of the situation by just playing around my team so we kind of meet up naturally regardless of it like you have to be kind of like adaptable and just because you're maybe like more of a brain player or maybe you're just more of an instinct player like recognize the position you're sort of playing in and then try and figure out that balance it can be like 80 20 it can be 90 10 it can be 40 60 it doesn't really matter again it's not 50 50 it's just what is appropriate based on you what kind of player you are and then what your objective is in in whatever position you're playing in that's pretty straightforward i think probably don't have to say much more about that can go on to communication because I think this is this is a pretty important thing. 
and I'll talk about communication with respect to like security and opportunity. When I think about like security in terms of communication, I think of like really basic calls like my vines are ready or I'm oblivion on you, you know, something like that. Something that provides like more security to your group. And so your group can like just like make better, better decisions and like maybe you guys coordinate better your abilities and just uh, your value just kind of goes up in the group. So really basic calls like that. And then in terms of opportunity, I would say opportunity is sort of like we need to stop the response coming or the funnel is coming onto point, jump off, things like that. It's sort of reorientation of what the group might be doing or what you might be doing in order to like you got value where you are and now you're going to get value somewhere else. So both of these are super, super, super important. Obviously, you know, there's some things within the communication that, you know, you don't need to like communicate, you don't need to say, and that will like vary depending on like the class you're playing. Most of the experienced players here kind of know like stuff that's good to say and stuff that's not good to say. If you can like keep comms as clear as possible, like that's a good thing. In terms of like opportunity, I'll talk about like hierarchy of awareness. And what I kind of mean by that is that depending on what you're playing, like the class that you're playing, you're just naturally going to have more awareness than like someone else. This is all sort of like positional, right? And just the nature of the class. So for example, let's just say like we're playing on this field and let's say that you are a bruiser and you're kind of like looking in this direction. And then let's say that you're like a mage or like kind of right behind your bruiser, you're looking in the same direction as well. And then let's say you're like a healer and you're sort of looking in this direction too. Each of these people has like a different kind of level awareness of like this entire field and like what's happening on this field, right? So we can say that like the bruiser kind of like sees this and the mage kind of like sees this and then the healer kind of sees like this, right? This hierarchy of like awareness is super important for like opportunity communication because you can kind of like, depending on how aware you are of what's happening, you can course correct for your group. So it's super important that everyone in the group, you speak up. If you're a mage and you kind of see something that is relevant for your bruiser, just like relevant in general for the group, that you call it out and maybe if the group in general like makes a better call. And then like for healers too, like healers have basically can see more than anyone can. If you have a healer that's like really good at healing, but like they also communicate a lot, it's so helpful for the group. But anyways, the, just the whole point is that this is, you shouldn't feel like just because there's a bruiser in the group and they're sort of like, they're the leader or someone in the group is sort of leader that you can't speak up. You have to speak up and hey, maybe you, you might be wrong, but you work that out later within the group or like in a VOD review or something, but don't just ignore things that you see. Don't ignore like your own instincts about what's happening on the field and just recognize that if your bruiser is here and they just jump into a clump, they have a lot less awareness than like you back here, kind of like watching the whole thing and just kind of seeing what's happening here and what's happening here and maybe even behind them. Don't be quiet when you, when you think you see something that's that's important that like everyone should kind of know about uh, just because like you're not the leader or something or you want to keep comms clear or whatever always speak up and now we'll go on to pathing and positioning and talk about this a little bit and then i'll talk about control and then we'll just watch one or two vods and give examples of this stuff like after i'm talking about it so you guys like can see it in terms of like pathing pathing is super super important and just having good pathing will just kind of set you up for success. So if we have the points and we can say that like this is bonfire or something and you're defending and there's fighting going on here and there's like fighting going on here and there's fighting going on here and there's fighting just going on in different places and stuff. And you are approaching all this, like let's just say you died and you respawn and you're coming out and you're running from this side. At some point along this path, you're going to have an idea of like where you want to go. Let's let's say that you're just playing in the top position. Let's, let's say you're like playing up here or something. And your idea is maybe you want to get to here. Or maybe there's like a skirmish going on right here. And you're like, okay, I want to hit this. Now, how you go about pathing here is going to impact a lot of your success in getting to what where you want to go or like doing what you want to do. Like let's say you want to help this clump or you want to get to your position. So in terms of pathing, pretty much the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you just have to kind of know where the direction of pressure is coming from and like where pressure is actually happening. That will kind of just dictate you know, how you're going to be successful. 
let's just say like something's going on right here and you wanna you will say like okay i'm just gonna go straight to it but let's just say like for some reason there's like something happening here or maybe i don't know if there's some other stuff happening close by if you just like go straight to it and you go through some pressure you're gonna just gonna be a lot less effective in doing what you want to do and getting to where you want to get to. Because, you know, let's say that you're a mage or something and you want to go and like scream a clump right here or something. You know, if you just run straight to it and just try and get there as fast as you can and you just kind of ignore anything in your way, you're just going to get interrupted. Everything you try and do, all of your skill usage, everything is going to be less effective and you just put yourself in more danger. So like if you're trying to like get to this position or something, it's generally better to kind of wrap a little bit and then maybe like, hey, you're trying to get to the top, wrap around bonfire and go like that because you'll notice like a lot of players just kind of beeline towards things and they end up it it ends up in a situation where like you're trying to get to somewhere and do something and you've just respawned and now like you've gotten to where you want to go or you've like gotten to this position and you've just used all of your cooldowns your pots are on cooldown like everything's just on cooldown and it's all because you just decided that you just wanted to get to where you wanted to go really quickly and like there's no body awareness you're just running through pressure so generally speaking like just taking wider angles is really good obviously like this will change depending on like your class. You know, if you're a bruiser, you're probably going to be more ooga booga, like straight into the fight sometimes. But still, you need to keep it in mind because you could be a bruiser that's following up on someone else's clump or someone else's fight, and you want to hit that clump from a good angle. Generally speaking, like you're just trying to not sort of rush. Maybe if you're a point player, you're like rushing to the position. But even still, like let's say you're a point player and you just want to get back to the point And let's say there's a bunch of stuff going on like right here. You don't want to be in a situation where you've just ran through this and you didn't really need to. And now you're just on the point now and you've used your cooldowns or like you've used your entomb or something like that. And like you're just more vulnerable and all you're doing is just trying to get back to the point. I will talk about angles here for a second too, because this is also like kind of relevant to how you're gonna path, how you're gonna position yourself. So let's just imagine for a second, I've gone over this with some of like the mages, so they're like, they'll be familiar with this, but it's something that everyone should be aware of. So I'm gonna move in this direction to engage this and they're gonna do the same. And in this position here, like some kind of clump fight is gonna happen. And you need to decide like as whatever class you're playing, maybe you're playing mage, maybe you're playing bruiser, maybe you're even like a range player. You wanna decide like, where do I wanna be when this clump fight actually happens? Do you wanna be here? I would probably say this is the worst position because again, it's about like the principle of you want to not engage against any kind of pressure that's coming at you. So you want to kind of be around pressure. We can say that like this is probably the worst position you could be in to engage this fight because you're going into the pressure and you just imagine that you just go into this and just POD is coming at you, getting like instantly CC'd or instantly taking damage like while you're trying to get to this position to like do something. So if that's the worst position, then essentially Essentially, this is the best position. So if you could engage from this position, this is actually 100% the best because you're positioned behind the enemy and you're moving in the direction of the pressure and you're sort of like behind it. But I'm not necessarily saying that you need to try and constantly engage from behind the enemy or that's going to be a good thing, you know, depending on what's happening. I'm just saying that if this is the worst and this is the best, then this is better than this. And this is better than the one before. And this is even better than the one before and on and on it gets better and better and better until we get to the best. And so at any time, just being a little bit wider around whatever the direction of the pressure is coming in is always gonna be better than like whatever is sort of like behind that and more in line with where the pressure is going toward. So you can just keep that principle in mind. You know, you don't have to be perfect all the time like with how you're orienting yourself, but you can always be a little bit better than a different position. And hey, you'll just, you know, you just min-max in that sense. Uh, the pre-movement thing that I want to talk about is probably mostly for healers. A lot of healers tend to can be pretty static. You know, like let's say you're a healer and your group is generally kind of like playing around here or they're just playing in this manner. And you just find that like you have some position somewhere, like I don't know, maybe it's here or something like that, like whatever, and you're just safe. Even though you're safe, you have a lot of awareness of like kind of everything that's sort of happening around this fight. So even though you are focused on like healing your group and you're safe for like the moment, you constantly need to be tracking like where enemies are and like what's going on and then pre-moving. Not moving like when the pressure comes, but like understanding like where the pressure is going to be and then 
you're already like here. So like maybe the pressure is going to come right here or maybe it's going to come right here, wherever. And it's just going to kind of arrive in this area and you've already moved away because you kind of recognize it and you keep like healing your group at the same time. Obviously, like this kind of seems a little bit basic, but you'll go around and you'll see like a lot of healers just kind of chilling when, when they get pressure. They kind of just stay in the same area and they don't really pre-move at all. They kind of just move when the pressure gets to them. And it's like, you have eyes, you can see what's around you. You can already be moving and going somewhere else so that, you know, you're never really feeling the pressure a lot of the times. And you'll notice like the best healers do that. The best healers are pre-moving constantly and it's very hard to like pin them down unless you're like actively going for them and just really trying to like just hunt them. So now I will talk about pushing advantage, like control, which I think is actually probably the most important part of this talk. So what I mean by troll and pushing advantage, which I think is something that is just like massively, massively important for, for like winning a war and for just being efficient, is that every time stuff is like just kind of happening all over the place, every time that you are with your group or you do something to control an area, it has to be for the sake of something else. It cannot be for the sake of just maintaining this area. It has to be for the sake of pushing advantage, the advantage that you gain from having that area. So if you're playing, like, let's just say like this is bonfire or whatever, and like you start controlling this area or something, you have to then do something else. And that could be like, maybe I'm looking at point now, or maybe I'm like pushing up. This sort of chain of control and then movement or, or direction to like somewhere else, it doesn't stop. You know, let's say that you get control here, like between the bonfire and point, and you get control, and then you push up. And let's say you do something here, and now you get some control here. After you get control here, again, you like move to something else, right? It could be sweeping across to like top left. It could be again hitting point. Um, maybe you look behind yourself for a second, and maybe you like kill someone really quickly, and then again like. You look back, but it's just a constant chain of control and doing something else, getting some value. And this chain doesn't end until this chain cannot end until you literally like are just dead. This doesn't just apply to like groups. It just it applies to you individually as well. And kind of the reason why I'm calling this just New World PVP macro fundamentals is because this stuff doesn't just like apply to wars. Everything here literally like applies to like, it can apply to like an OPR. It can apply to any sort of group PVP kind of that takes place in this game. So these principles are just like kind of things, these fundamentals are just kind of things that you should just have as like a foundation because it's applicable to like everything that you can kind of, all the sort of group PVP stuff that you can do in this game. Because a lot of what you'll see, and I'll show this in one of the VODs, a lot of the NA VODs that I've looked at, there's a lot of like, we need to like kind of earn the space. And like once we've sort of earned it, like we try and like kind of just like keep it. And we kind of just really sort of static about it. You know, even if like maybe we push advantage for like one second and, you know, maybe we get some control here, we kind of give up that space a lot. This is something that like in whatever the wars coming up that we do or just any wars that you do in general, you have to like break this kind of mindset because it's just harmful overall. And you're going to kind of see, I'm going to kind of show why it's harmful and why like progress that you'll make in a war can just be kind of like just lost um, just because people get baited by things that are low value. They think, oh, we've killed everyone here, so we've done our job. And then they just find themselves like in the same situation again, like having to to like repeat everything and, and fight over again. In terms of conclusions and stuff, I'm not gonna, gonna really have any conclusions. Just be like, if anyone has any questions or whatever, like you can ask questions. And yeah, that'll just be, that'll be kind of the end of it. And yeah, if you wanna say something like while we're watching the VOD, like if you notice something or you just wanna point something out or have a question, seriously, just go, go for it. You can ask, it doesn't matter. So we will first start with, yeah, we can start with this one and just talk about space usage for a second because I think how we play the point is super important, not just for like point players. So this is a, like a point player's perspective, but like when you decide that you want to get onto the point, you're deciding like, hey, I'm going to depressure the point or I'm just going to pressure the point and play on the point. You kind of have to have the same fundamentals that like a point player has, like in terms of like how you're positioning yourself and like moving around. Obviously, you're not doing the same things that like a point player is doing, but for like the most part, maybe they're just more in the mix of things and like the first people to sort of get the pressure. But you need to like be able to navigate very similarly to like a point player once you decide to get on the point. And yeah, we'll just watch this yeah, for a second. 
and then I'm gonna go back and kind of point out a couple of things. Good imagery in the bottom left here. Yeah, yeah, I see that, I see that. Looking left side, looking left side. I'm not going to really comment on how this person's playing point. I've already done like a VOD review with this person about their point play. I'm just showing this because I just want you guys to kind of see stuff that's happening sort of on the point. I'm going to tune for a sec. Come out. Look right side, look right side, look right side. Okay. So I'll just like stop here and just talk a little bit about what I mean. So on the points, and again, some of you, this will be pretty like already have thought about this and already know about this, but. There's like stuff that's just like happening on the point. Like there's fights that happen that are there's like pressure on the point. And this pressure just moves around at different places of the point. And as it moves, you have basically just areas that are free to like stand on. And if you're trying to play point and you're trying to pressure point, you have got to be aware of this, regardless of whatever you're gonna do to this stuff happening. You need to be aware of the open space because this relates to like how you're gonna exit and how effective you're gonna be like when you're actually engaging stuff here. We can just watch this for now and just kind of see how that open space changes and, and just have your awareness of it because you know him as a point player, he can be on the outside here. This is okay to kind of be here, but at the same time like it's completely safe to be here. And if you're trying to pressure point or depressure point, then you want to, you only want to get in this position when you absolutely can't play anywhere. Otherwise, like if you can play somewhere, you go to that position. This will apply for anyone who's just trying to jump on point and play on point and pressure point, whether they're a point player or not. Top right, top right, top right, top right, top right. We can see that all the pressure is, is on the right side and it's like the left side is completely free. And you'll see like the best point players will use this space like very efficiently. Hey, take it down, take it down. Minus one, you shooter, minus one, you shooter. A little heavy on this side, but now we can see it shifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot Fuki, shoot Fuki, shoot Fuki. I pull back, pull back, pull back. And now, like, see, it's kind of changed. Now, like, we have a little bit of, like, free space here. Maybe, like, maybe a little bit, like, like further back, too. Keep ticking, keep ticking. We want to keep ticking, we want to keep ticking, we want to keep ticking. Look at the clerk, the clerk's one, the clerk's one. Might as well top point, might as well top point. I'm going to tune for a sec. I'm out. I'm playing out in the potting for a second here. Got Oblivion now, left side. They're wrapping into our and you can see like these guys up here like potentially like this is going to become a hot spot and another thing about like the point in general and, and this is kind of a principle like for sort of everywhere is you know you see all these reds and you want to maneuver around these reds you want to avoid these reds but also you need to be on the lookout for your blues because these people can be even more dangerous than these people because as soon as you get near them and you're static kind of like hovering around them too much and you guys are kind of like come together you just become like a big target so be aware of like the open space on the point like when you're going to jump on point but also like really be aware of where your blues are because they will get you killed and you will get them killed and we'll just like kind of watch like how this open space like you, you just see it just naturally just kind of move top, around top, and top. just change top, and the pressure now is down here and now there's open space here like we'll just watch it for like a little bit and you can just notice it for yourself now same thing applies to healing too if you're healing in the back line and you're healing with like four other people next to you like that's going to become a hot spot for their kill team instantly exactly and that's that, that's the, yeah it's exactly correct top, and top, that top, that top, just top, goes top, to like pre-movement again moving away from that kind of stuff before you become a target sort of thing. Yeah. Potting for a sec. Potting, I'm potting, I'm potting. Just screaming top right, screaming top right. I'm gonna tune for a sec. I'm out. My oblivion bottom, my oblivion bottom. You can just see it now. Our blues here are stacked together a little bit, and now they kind of become a little bit of a target. I have vines. I have vines. I have vines. Top left. Top left. Top and the open top space. Left, yeah. Top left, top left. Just keeps shifting around. Just keeps moving around. It was like here a bit, like here, and now like it's all like right here. 
like a little bit down there, and like this is all free. So also like too, once you have these open spaces, you know a lot of the time too that when shit is like happening here, like when it, when these like fights are happening, as soon as you know like the direction that like the enemy pressure is kind of going in, where your blues are sending the pressure. You know, let's say we have a lot of brews right here, and like they're kind of engaging these guys, right? So we kind of know that maybe the pressure is sort of going in like this direction, kind of thing. And if it's going in that direction, it would be fantastic if there was like a shower here. Top right, top right, top right, top right, top right, screaming top right, screaming top right. And this can also apply for like the other side too, right? So like, you know, if a mage like is showering right here and then like we get a shower right here, we've kind of sealed off all the escape routes for these people that are trying to get out. And you will just, you just notice that you just automatically see the stuff because just tracking like everything that's kind of happening, like where the, they can all die, they can all die. like where the free they spaces they can, they can, they can, they can, and like where like people like will be most likely to retreat to. Okay. That's that's probably enough of that. We'll go to this spot. This will we'll just go a little bit through this, and and then we should be done. Oh, I can see it. So start of the war a little bit late, and again, this is like a situation where like, hey, I want to go somewhere. I'm moving from A to B. How am I gonna get to B? How am I gonna path to B? And if I decide what I'm gonna do at B, what's the best angle to engage from? According to like the pressure, pressure is going this way, or if the pressure is going that way, or whatever it might be. So in this case, I think it's pretty safe to say that probably if we think of this as quadrants that we have, and this is the bottom right quadrant, so to speak, we can kind of see that like, hey, we're kind of vibing. We kind of own all this space. This is our space. However, this engagement like started off, or this is sort of the beginning of it, at least at this point, like we kind of own this space. This should kind of be obvious to you, and it's probably just instinctively obvious to him. He's probably like trying to just go over here, to trying to just engage somewhere around this area. And again, is this the best path for him to go through? You can just kind of see he just snuck by all this stuff going here and got super lucky to just like get behind the enemy, right? He gets like a really good angle, so this is like nice that he's thinking about that. But literally just doing that, he just could have gotten completely screwed. And if we go backwards, you can imagine that instead of just going here and just going straight to this point, that instead he just wrapped around or went a little bit wider and then just came back in. And you might say, oh, well, like maybe he might be late then, but... He's not going to be late. You know, whatever happens in the position that he's trying to get to is probably like going to happen for a little while because there's a bomb and then there's counter bombing and then there's people trying to get away. And you can see. So if he was just kind of wrapping here a little bit, like he's, he's sort of at this position, these guys are pushing in. Now, like when we, like when this, when this little skirmish happens, now he's here and he's looking at this and He's way safer. He can still do everything he wants to do because he's coming at it, at it at a good angle. He's, he's coming at it at a great angle because we know that the enemy is pushing up like this and sort of directing their pressure in this manner. And he is coming in sort of like this is the snake's head or whatever, like hitting this part. He is coming in and he's cutting off the tail kind of thing or like here, like kind of that. So he would just be in this position. He wouldn't be late to what's happening here and he'd be way safer and do exactly what he was going to do. But instead, he rushes to this position, kind of, like, stands out because, fair enough, like, all this pressure is happening and you don't want to get caught there, like, because you're, because you got so close and you rushed here. And here he could just die for no reason. He just, because of how he decided to path, he just basically could have died. So, first he got lucky by not getting any pressure coming at him when he just ran through because, like, your bruisers are coming at you, like, it, you're going to get hit by, like, a path of destiny. You're going to get hit by something. Maybe a st maybe you're going to be running through a storm. A wall might be here, whatever it might be. You can avoid all that by simply just going wider. Watch out, I see you. I got nothing for three seconds. And in terms of angling and stuff, like, this is really good. Like, his, his group, I think, is supposed to be playing top right. He's, like, actually in, he's actually in the best position right now. Like, this is a really good position for how he wants to, like, deal with everything that's happening here. He's basically essentially behind everyone, and, you know, enemy pressure is generally just kind of going in this direction, and he's just kind of chilling behind it and just kind of ready to react and, like, super safe. Like, right now he's not getting pressured or anything. You know, if he is, he could, like, retreat back, you know, behind the bonfire. He could just dance around the bonfire, whatever it might be. Like, this is a great spot. This is all good. Shower is good, and you can see we're directing pressure in this, this direction. 
enemies are falling back, he's here to, you know, like with a wall, whatever, to sandwich pressure. So really good. And you can just see, like, he's super safe. Just from that position, he's like way safer. So we'll let this play a little bit more, and then I'm going to talk about pushing advantage um, as it relates to like what's kind of happening here in this war. So keep in mind that his position is the top right position. Um, it doesn't mean like he's tied to that position, obviously, but it means like he kind of wants to control this area and remember like after we get control, like we want to do something with it. So that seems like pretty good what he just did. But now we look behind us. Enemy is pushed in here. All the control that we got here is gone. And we can just watch how this happened. Really not much to do with him. Some of it is obviously to do with him, but it's just the decision making of everyone in the raid. And that's why here we're still kind of fighting for control here a little bit. We're doing pretty well. He's positions himself nicely. We have the blues kind of like. We have the blues sort of over here that are kind of like winning. And, you know, because we have pressure right here, they're a little bit more free and they're just winning and they're pushing up. So this is good. We have pressure coming up this way. The pressure here is still being directed. So this will be good. If we win this, we're kind of winning the area. This is a good storm. Decent shower. Good follow up. And now we have even, we have one even more area now. See now that we've kind of like moved our control up, like, and we kind of have all of this, kind of like all of this kind of thing. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with the control that we get? Let's see. Still have some people pushing in here a little bit. Right, some of them have just creeped back in there a little bit more. We're focused on these two here. We clean them up. They push back in to the position again, get a nice storm, like decent pressure. And once again, like we're going to push them out of the position, I think. And there we go. Now we see we have the reds retreating backwards and we've kind of won all the space and everything sort of behind it. And now what are we going to do with the space that we got? What are we going to do with the control that we got? Are we going to continue to push the advantage or are we just going to give it up? Now we see that because this push isn't happening, we see a wrap come in. Enemies start to approach here again and have all these people just focused on this clump here. And we even win it again, like we kill some more people here, but again, you can see some wrapping that's like still happened and we have some more enemies that are coming here. And still like there's a big gap between those players that have pushed in and these players here. We have us just like focusing on this one person who can't do anything anyways. And now we're kind of getting sandwiched here. So he kind of sees this, kind of engages it, which I mean, it's good. It's fine. It's nice follow up. But like, you know, imagine as these people are retreating, like we just have everyone kind of pushing into this, right? While these guys are here focusing this way. We can imagine that we start pushing these guys more and more and more out of the position. We kind of just gain this ground and we kind of just stop and we kind of just pick off targets here, which can't do anything anyways. This one or two, these two people here, like it's nice picking off targets that are isolated and that's great. But like you focus too much time here. If you just hover around in this area for too long, all that's going to happen is that the enemy retreats back, you stay here and then they come back. And then we are going to start the whole process over again, which we're going to see in a second. So we're just, instead of just pushing past these last stragglers and pushing into the people back there, and it would be great too, because look, we can see all our blues here. We're pushing too. So we just needed a, a more of a wave going here. 
we need like that synchronization between like I, don't, I mean this too like people buying here whatever like they just see like people just buying here they think it's done they think they've done their job and the job is not done i mean look at this look at the control over here complete utter control and all we need is these people to like you know we need the red collar obviously to be aware of this and to like make good calls but we need everyone to sort of like constantly push that advantage we have people buying we have those people over there like i mean what are they doing they're just you have like 20 people over here like engaging with what three four people instead of just continuing to crash into these people and us still pushing here completely squeeze these guys out of the position full reset that's a decent storm now enemy comes back we focus on these guys okay we got some good wipes we're still just chilling back here. We're just like chilling around here. And those enemies now have wrapped because we stopped exerting pressure in this direction. We stopped pushing here and hovered around this sort of area a little bit and just kind of chilled here. Now they've wrapped around. Now more have pushed in to take space here. And now it's time to repeat the process all over again. This time though, now these bows are like pushed up here. Now they've kind of like won their fight and now we have a bunch of bows here too to deal with. So we're we're doing this process all over again, but also now there's like bows behind us just like shooting into the right. Good, like low target, we finished that guy off. This is, this is good. We're still fighting around here and we are the top group, right? We are the top right group and we're still kind of back here. And look, we have established some control. So like, you know, it would be nice if we had, you know, more of the back groups taking the space that he's kind of in, and then he can kind of be up here pushing into these people, pushing the advantage. Okay, this is awesome. So again, it's like, we're restarting the war again. <laughs> this is like a restart of the war. Like we just respawned and the war is restarted. Exact same scenario again, we have all we've won all the space like however it happened we have all the space and let's see what we do with the space that we got very nice again remember he could have wrapped behind the bonfire here like we can go back a little bit and talk about pathing again just point that out he wants to get down here to these people and he knows that these people are in this direction and he could just easily wrap around and just get behind them and not worry about anything that could be happening or any kind of potential pressure that could be coming in this direction to like stop him right and see like pathing here but like kind of course corrects and goes in a better direction and gets a little bit wider See, he could have done that same shower, but he could literally be here doing it and standing behind them and everything he's doing is more effective and he's not as, as in, like, in the same kind of danger. You can see like we've gained a lot of advantage here and like this storm is great, really, really nice. You can kind of see the staticness of this side. And I'm very reluctant to keep moving forward after you gain all this ground. I mean, then now look like they're invading again. Like, why, why should that happen? Why is it that you can have this much space coming out to this position and it can't be a thing where we're just all kind of moving forward and just trying to get more and more and more space? Look at like how we're kind of like what we're paying attention to. There's a lot of fighting here. It's just all these people just chilling here. And this is good. Like his group doing this is like, he's they're doing their job. He should, yeah, this is a good storm. 
Nice catch. You can see, like, he's his angles are pretty good. Like, like this is a solid mage, but like, and like the raid's doing pretty well in this area, but like, which is not translating to any for them to actually like reset. Pushing into these people finally, like we're pushing, like we're pushing more advantage. You have these people rapping, and because they're rapping, like his whole team now is like talking about the people rapping and just turning around. And all the space we earned, we're just gonna give it up to like chase those people who went through our backline. And his group is top right. Okay, we we cleared we cleared that side like cleared the back back right and we pushed in again. We're pushing through. We're killing them. This is us. This is really nice. And he wants to move into the road, which I think is a good idea. I think more people should be pushing into the road and going wide. But look at this. I mean, we have people starting to move back, and we're still stuck up here. We're still stuck back here, even though we got control. And someone in his group said, "Don't, don't go any further. We need to control Bon." It's like, bro, like you controlled Bon. Are you just gonna sit there now? Like, are you just gonna like chill and just let the enemy just come back into the space again and just? You have to, you have to push advantage. There's no reason why we cannot just push all these guys out of the position completely and just kill them, push them away. And people back here, obviously, they're important and it's good to kill isolated targets. But these people, a lot of these people on the outside are like trying to support the inside. And if you kill like these people on the outside and you're pushing all of them back, it's these people are just going to die naturally. And there's probably a lot of people getting baited by the by the by the position too. I mean, like this is a really good example. Like he's getting baited by his bruiser that's like right here. We can run out again, and we got control back in our back line. Kind of like we got control again. Like there's nothing here. Kind of like this again. Like just have control. Why can't we keep extending it forward? We're getting baited here, like around these spots and just kind of trying to kill everything in the area. We're just trying to kill every single thing. And we just don't think that, don't think about all these people, these healers here that are like supporting this and just slowing down that process and then letting the respawns come back in from like wherever they're coming in. I'm trying to get up to Barco here. Seems at me. So now he's he's baited by his bruiser, so he stops here and jumps on the point. Like, it's not he's not really needed here on the point. Like, he got it. Make fine. He got a good vines, but like, there's just all these people back here that are just like free casting. And then you have the respawns that are coming in from over here. I'm dead. I'm dead. And he's just dead. And all the vods that I've seen so far, like shown this just like not really pushing advantage and so this is probably the most important thing that i want anyone to get out of this this talk because everyone kind of has to be aware of this because the raid kind of like moves together so anyone has any questions you can ask them if not that's also cool yeah um, i just want to say i feel like a lot of light players are aware of that like pushing advantage thing like if you kill like two light players in the other kill squad like a lot of people will be like okay like we can wrap their road now or whatever but I feel like after playing versus Supple or EU, a lot of people can feel it. It feels like when they, they kill like one or two people in your group and you just get ran down like dogs by like the rest of their army. Yeah. 
And I feel like it's really important for the medium groups especially to know that because like that's what takes the most space and like actually is able to hold it. Because like no light players can actually really hold that space if they just like recrash on type stuff. Yeah, but that's I true. I think like I don't know, a lot of it is just like seeing where your blues are going and it's where their red space is and you just have to run into it. So that's I don't know playing versus like Seth Husband and Creelix, they literally don't care. They just hold W at you. Yeah. And it was like that on EU, but like amplified a hundred times. We actually got ran to our war camp. So yeah, for sure. And I think look like sometimes people want to be safe and stuff and like you don't want to like overextend, but there's no overextending if like everyone is making space for everyone kind of thing it's only bad if you know some people push up and then a bunch of people just stay back and then there's like this massive gap in between that can be bad too it's you have to think of it as like um i mean this is more this is very simplistic of simplistic way of thinking of it but like if you have the point like this and let's just say like there's like different layers sort of in terms of where people are kind of laying kind of like that some groups are sort of positioned more to the top and then like you have groups that are sort of situated towards the middle and then you have more of the back groups as you gain control in like different areas it basically should translate to like all these layers kind of moving a little bit further forward it's a very general way of like looking at it it doesn't have to be exactly like this it's just the field that they're covering just like moves forward so that keep controlling more and more of the point